querying object properties, we kind of saw a little bit of that when we got the row uh, three from the transformation matrix of the camera for the uh, culling of particles by velocity, but uh, it's actually a little bit more powerful than that because it's actually using MaxScript uh, uh, expressions and you can access deeper properties than just what is on top of the object. Uh, for example, you can go into an object and say uh, material.diffuseColor and you're going to get the color of the diffuse channel of a standard material assigned to an object that you picked. Um, we're going to take a look at that uh, in a second, but the first thing that we want to try is get a, a gizmo, a spherical uh, atmospheric gizmo, its position and radius and do some gradient with it. So I'm going to reset my scene and um, I'll create a teapot and I'll convert it to uh, particles to a PT volume. So um, I'll create a little bit more particles to be more visible and the other object that I need is going to be an atmospheric apparatus, a sphere gizmo. Now I'll create this sphere gizmo to be close and overlapping with this object and uh, now I want to create a gradient, let's say a color blend, uh, using that position of the gizmo. So output will be color so we can visualize what we're doing and then I'll say input object will be uh, the object uh, that we'll be using as our gizmo, that's the spherical gizmo, and I press the button that says add property query. The position is the first thing that I want, that's the world space position of this object, and the other thing that I'm going to need, since I have picked this object already, if I click on the list, I get a couple of its uh, base uh, object properties also, so I have the radius and that's what I want. So I'm going to use a gradient between uh, the center and the sides of the gizmo to go between zero at the center and one at the radius distance. The other thing that I'm going to need is I'm going to subtract from this position the position of the particles, but you have to remember that the positions are generally in object space and this is in world space, so we have to unify the spaces. I go and press the two world and now this position is converted to world space, subtracted and that gives me a magnitude, vector magnitude that I can use. I'll connect this here and then introduce a VM, vector magnitude, and uh, this is the length, the, that's the distance from the center of the uh, gizmo to the position of the particle and I just have to divide it by the radius to get a gradient between 0 and 1. So I do a divide and I connect radius to the second input of the divide. If I update now it says yeah but that's uh, no color so I need a function blend. I press again dub, control W and shift control W. I draw a blue and red colors for the gradient and now if you look you have red in the center of the gizmo. I'll disable the uh, adaptive degradation so it doesn't hide my particles and if I move any of the two objects I can move the gizmo or I can get the PRT load and move it into the gizmo. It's now reacting correctly and if I select the gizmo and change its radius, it's going to affect the particles correctly. So here we are reading two properties of the object and calculating a gradient based on position and radius of, of this object. And um, I can also go and expose this in the user interface so the user can go and pick a different gizmo. If he has two and he changes his mind, he can do that. Another thing that we can do, and as I mentioned, we can go deeper in this case. Uh, let's assume that um, I don't want to do this, but I want to just take some scene object, just as for demonstration purposes. I'm going to create a geosphere, and I'm going to assign a material to this geosphere, uh, which has a particular color, for example, this shade of blue. Uh, and now I want all my particles to read what is the color of this object. And in fact, I'll go in the end and even keyframe this color to go into a different direction. So we have an animated diffuse color. I want our particles to just follow that color. I could assign this material directly to my particles, but uh, it's more for the sake of showing how you can access data and a little bit less uh, practical in this case. Let's say that our color should be input object property, query property, and now on this list, I don't really have anything like the material. Uh, property, so I'll have to type it myself, and you can type whatever you want here. As long as you know a little bit of Max script, you'll be good. So I can say uh, material dot diffuse color, 
and this is supposed to produce the color that we're getting there. Let's see what we're getting. Why are we getting yellow here? That's uh, kind of uh, unexpected, I would say, because uh, I would expect it to actually get that color. Did we type anything? Material. If you, yeah, we are outputting the position, of course. I forgot to delete my uh, output, so right now we're visualizing the actual uh, that's red and green together because we are uh, taking the position of the object. And if I move this object around, uh, the color will change. Now it's red. So I'll just delete this uh, uh, additional property that we don't need and it will automatically reconnect. And now if I'm moving the time slider, I get the color of the geosphere transferred onto my teapot. You can do exactly the same by actually using a script operator. So instead of uh, uh, creating that, uh, I can do IS for input script and I can type in here geosphere 001 dot uh, material dot diffuse color. And if I update this, I'm going to get a similar result. And if I play back the time it's going to update but you see already the problem it is actually dependent on the naming uh, it's explicit naming and you cannot rename the object anymore and if you rename it it will break it and uh, it actually doesn't necessarily create a dependency in the uh, modifier so changing properties of this object would actually update and when you're using the input object it creates a dependency it will update dynamically on the single frame if you are modifying properties of that object so I recommend actually using input uh, object and uh, property query 